A few years back, I stopped by a pesterant, a pop-up stand offering dry roasted mealworms and chocolate covered ants. They were crunchy, but they're being promised as the food of the future. But this film is less about the argument of why you should eat insects, and more about whether you could survive on an insect diet. There's certainly nothing biologically stopping us. Many primates eat insects as a staple food. They form the majority of their diet. Other primates use them almost like superfoods, high fat and protein supplements on top of their usual diet. A larger primate, though, finds it hard to get enough calories from small insects, so they usually only bother if they can find them in bulk often acquired through the clever use of tools to extract them from those difficult to reach places. Also, humans eating insects isn't a new thing. Eating insects, or entomophagy as it's known, is a regular part of the diet of many countries in Central and South America, Africa and Asia. And larvae like wichita grubs are also part of the traditional bush tucker diet of Aboriginal Australians. In fact, at least two billion people worldwide have insects as part of their diets. And there's a good reason for that. Despite looking gross, insects tend to have a very good nutritional profile. They provide all nine of the essential amino acids, valuable fatty acids, and are high in calcium. And some are even high fat. In fact, one of the more imaginative uses of insects in cooking has involved extracting larval fat and using it for stir fries. There are downsides to surviving on insects though. Some can accumulate heavy metals. They may have pathogens that we don't understand, and there's also the chance that, like shellfish, they could cause an allergic reaction in some people. Also, although some people say that a kilogram of feed given to a cricket will produce 12 times more protein than that same kilogram of feed given to cattle, some new research does actually lessen that. Estimate. However, one thing we do agree on is that insect farms are much easier to operate than cattle farms. There's less chance that insects will catch diseases which will cross over to humans, there are less animal welfare concerns, and some bugs, like the larvae of the soldier fly, will even essentially self-harvest. Their instincts cause them to leave their containers when their larvae hatch, making them easier to collect. And there is hope that even if we won't eat insects, they could replace the expensive and often environmentally unfriendly fish meal that is fed to chicken and fish that we do eat. One farm in South Africa feeds maggots on food waste, then they press them and produce 30 tonnes of protein-rich meal a day. But back to eating them. Now, look, I appreciate that you probably don't find the idea of scoffing insects particularly attractive. It's a classic dad joke, right? What's worse than finding a maggot in your apple? Half a maggot! Boom boom! But you know what? We actually already eat more insects than you think. And no, I am not talking about you eating eight spiders a year in your sleep or whatever. That's actually a load of rubbish, by the way. Possibly actually invented in a magazine article to prove how quickly bogus facts spread online. See the footnote below for more on that. What I'm talking about is the normal food that you eat every day actually containing more insect parts than you realise. Do you consume any red coloured food or drinks? Yogurts, juices, sausages? Well, that's likely the natural red colouring cochineal that replaced some of the artificial colours which were found to be carcinogenic. Now, cochineal colouring is so common it's got its own E number, E120, but it comes from a small aphid-like bug whose red pigment evolved as a chemical weapon against ants and other predators. Oh, and cochineal is common in lipsticks and blushes too. There's also the fact that any food we eat is likely to have been contaminated by insects at some point. Take chocolate, for example, and I'm so sorry to do this. In America, the FDA recommends action is taken if a producer's chocolate has over 60 insect fragments per 100 grams. Anything less than that is A-OK. -okay. So, given that we already live in a man-eat insect world, will you be chowing down on insects in the future? Uh, maybe we won't be eating insects, maybe we could survive without eating anything at all. Check out the recent film that I did on exactly that. If you had to eat an insect, which one would you choose? Let us know.